to another three string song lesson. So got an absolute classic for you today. This is Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. So really iconic riff, you know, heard the track once and it's, I think, instantly recognizable. Uh, dead simple, but really effective. And it works surprisingly well on three strings. So this tuning um, is pretty close to the original. Uh, we'll just double check this and I'll explain what I'm talking about. So we are in EBE tuning. So this is low E, middle B, and high E. So the original song is actually not in a concert pitch. So uh, we're very close in, in this tuning, but the original recording, studio recordings, actually slightly sharp. So uh, what we mean by concert pitch is, say if you have a, like a clip-on tuner, or if you have a phone app and you, you tune to these notes, EBE, -E, uh, they will be at concert pitch, which is like 440 hertz for a particular A note. But the original Stones recording is uh, slightly sharp. It's uh, by sort of 50 cents, like h half a fret's worth. So it's not quite uh, in um, either E or, or F. And so if you wanted to play along with the original, so once you've learned all of these uh, riffs, you could play with the original, but you'd want to reduce the original recording by um, like minus 50 cents, which is the, the equivalent of like half a fret, basically, half a semitone. And then you can play along with it and you can also download a completely free song chart from the website so there's a link and you can then see what the full structure is once you've learned all the parts but i reckon that's about it let's get straight on with learning the song so this song uses a harmonic minor scale in the riff now, uh, there's another video which was um, looking at the uh, songs that were included in the demo, um, the short video, and it's just kind of explaining how the scale works a little bit. So you can check that out if you want. But here is just a very quick recap over the open position scale. So we're in E, starting from low E, then fret 2, fret 3, fret 5, open middle string, fret 1, fret 4, fret 5. So depending on how you play it, it can sound quite sort of classical or quite sort of Middle Eastern. And uh, you can completely play it up strings as well. So you can check that video out. But what we're doing is we're actually starting from uh, fret 5, which is what we call the octave. So that's also in E and we're, we're playing up the scale so that's that's like the main riff in the song so it's five seven eight ten step back down eight seven five play five again four five seven five four and so I'll, I'll start off by going through the main riff and then I'll have a little look at what's happening uh, with the introduction afterwards which is a little bit more free time so we can if we hold on fret five uh, we've actually got three E notes there fret 5 is the same as the, the high E and then we've got a low one so it's kind of like a drone really and you know you know it's got a sitar on the, the original so it's definitely got a sort of eastern kind of um, influence and uh, so I was just doing uh, add some effects like a little bit of delay and stuff but um, I, I was doing an upstroke on the demo so, so it's almost like a, a drone and then I'm playing that melody, which is just literally, uh, it comes in on beat two. Two, three, four, one, 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 two. Okay, 
so that that's basically the tune hopefully that's that's recognizable uh, what will make it sound more interesting is actually putting the bass note in so I was just so you can hear that that's completely on the beat all of those notes and I was just hitting the bass in between so if they're on the beat then half beat notes would be Okay, so the first part's quite easy because uh, it's, it's over an E chord, but then sort of halfway through it, it changes so it sounds like it's now over a B chord. And you know, we're slightly limited on three strings, so I was, I was just sort of picking out the, the, the bass. So the first part, I would probably use up picks on each of the melody notes and then down picks on each of the bass notes. So if you watch the picking here, okay, and when we change to the next chord, this might feel a bit awkward. Now I'm, I'm trying to hold this on uninterrupted. So I, I was using my third finger on fret 7, so the melody here is, I'm going to use my little finger on, on fret 7 because this one's busy up here. So I'm, I'm stepping down with my first finger from 5 to 4, back to 5, little finger 7, first finger back to 4, but with this note on as well. So that might well feel a little bit awkward, that little side step. That's the hardest part. Little fingers tucking in on fret seven. So let's try, try that from a different angle. Um, the melody is actually coming in on beat two. So uh, we've got the drone up strum on beat one. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, change, bass. And I'm, I'm, I'm just f filling out uh, the, the rest of that bar just, just on the bass because the, the melody note just rings out. So three, Four, one, and we, we, we can even put, uh, ju just to keep the momentum going, we can even put a bass note in just after the drone if we want. So we could go up, down, and then melody, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I would loop that, I would go quite slowly. Rhythmically, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, there's no kind of funny off beats or anything, but um, probably the position. And also, when you're fretting this B, you, you've got to be fairly bridged so that you're not, you're not catching string two when you're picking it. So if you can see. And then it's pretty straightforward. It's just uh, repeating loads and loads of verses and choruses. So the chorus is E power chord. So I'm on uh, frets five and seven on the top two strings. 
and then it goes to a D. So the choices are, as I played in the demo, I did this particular D. So that's fret 2, fret 3, or fret 5. And again, watch your bridge. It's quite easy to be flat with this finger. With that, it's a bit of a stretch. And then it's uh, a G. So I, I, I was just going to a power chord there. So that's a straight bar. Again, if you want any um, sort of basic tips on barring, you can check out Sunshine You Love. That's that goes into it in quite a lot of detail. So we've got E, D, G, back to D, and then back to E, E power chord again. And that's again quite uh, simple, re re relatively simple ry rhythm. It's one, two. So you see, we're, we're, I'll, I'll go around some slightly more interesting strumming in a minute, but basically just, just mapping out the chords, you can see it's two beats for each chord, but then when we get back to the, the E, we hold it for a two, two whole bars, because um, the, the, the changes go with the, the, the vocal phrases, and then E, e just kind of like hangs on the um, last vocal note, and, and we just hang on this chord. Uh, so you can play the D like that. If that's a bit of a stretch, we could play a D power chord, which still sounds pretty good. You know, you, you might even prefer the sound. So this would be instead of fret two, we're actually pinky finger on fret five, third finger, sorry, first finger on fret three, and then third finger on fret five. So that's fret three in the middle, fret five on the top two. And that is a D power chord. So we're going from an E power chord to a D power chord to a G power chord back again. Yeah, so that, that sounds pretty good as well, to be honest. You know, so wh whichever one you find easiest to play is absolutely fine. Second time round the chords. I'll play that one again, but you can do the power chord if you want. There's the G. So there's the D, that's the G, back to the D, but then instead of going back to the um, E, we actually then go to an A and a B. So it would be from the, the E, two beats, D for two beats, G for two beats, D for two beats, A for four beats, D for four beats. So let's try from this angle and uh, again just mapping it out we'll do the ry rhythm in a minute. So we've got E for two beats, this is from the beginning, D for two beats, G for two beats, D for two beats, E for two bars, so that would be eight beats. Start again, stay on E for two beats, then D for two beats, G for two beats, D for two beats, A for two beats, So the A is fret 2 on the middle string <clears throat> and fret 5 on the bass string. And again, if I'm too flat with this finger this time, I'm catching string 1. And definitely if I'm too flat with the little finger, I'm, I'm catching the strings below. So uh, it's a little bit of an awkward one on that. So that's an A. Frets two and five, and then this is actually B power chord. So the B notes in the middle, and then we've got fret two on either side on the E strings. Okay. If you've decided the D 
is a bit of a stretch, you may well decide that the A is a bit of a stretch as well. So you could play the A as a bar chord and that would turn it into a, an A power chord. So that's just at fret five. Same, same uh, shape, exactly the same shape as the G, which is at fret three, the A is now at fret five. Uh, you could even just go up to B at fret seven, or you could go from the A down to the B down there. I, I think it sounds quite, quite nice finishing on that chord. So I'm, I'm good that shape. I'm gonna finish on the B down there, um, but, Bear in mind that if, if any of these feel a bit horrible to play, we can do alternate versions. So the second time round, there's the E, I'll do the power chord, D, G, power chord, D, there's a A, I could do that, or there's the full the G power chord, there's the D, there's the A, and then there's a low B. So that, that's a power chord, but they sound a little bit different because we're obviously further down the neck, so we're picking out lower versions of the notes. Okay, so... A more exciting strumming pattern kind of largely involves just going twice as fast, to be honest. So, uh, again, still not worrying too much about uh, putting everything in. I could just play half beat notes. So instead of one, two, it's one, two. So this time I can fit in four half beat notes for each of these first few chords. So it'd be like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one on that for absolutely ages. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. And it's quite driving, so I'm playing all down strokes there. Maybe you could, not, instead of going bum, 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 maybe you, you could sort of break it up a little bit by going like loud, quiet, or full, less strings. It just, just makes it a little bit less kind of monotonous. Um, so you can do that. And uh, playing downstrokes at that speed, allows you to do a quicker upstroke in between so without breaking um, the movement you can do a nice like loose wrist flick and uh, go down up down and that that's actually right at the beginning so it's like um, so if we go in Three, four, and a one. So it's it's just before beat one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four. So you can do that. If any of these chords are difficult to kind of land straight away. Now people do this all the time on um, guitars with all numbers of strings. You can, you, you can just catch the open strings with a strum. You keep the rhythm going, you keep the energy of the song going, but you allow this hand a little bit more time to change. So I could go like this. One, two, open, three, four, open. And you, you don't actually notice that when you go faster, that the open strings just become part of the sound. You're not like making a feature of them. So it's like one. Wow. 
one more thing you could do you could change I think uh, I, I was um, I, I was going back to that D early so I was going one two three four one two and four so basically I had three strums on the G and I was jumping straight back to the D so you might find it easier to, to go back to that one so combining all of that and a one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and a one two three four one two and three even go into the B early if you want. One, two, three, four, and. One at a time, learn the verse, learn the chorus, and then finally, the intro. Now, I might start the intro on, on this high string, so... So it kind of goes in between the same two chords as before. Uh, I could start with a sort of little drone. It's more free time, so you can definitely play it slower. So it's two, three, five, two, three. Before you go back to that open E, go, go to the B in the bass and then hold that and uh, instead of playing fret 5 like in the main part I'll, I'll play the open string and then 4 fret 4 on the middle string open and then fret 7 so all of that and again it's quite slow free time 2, 3, 5, 3, 2, change Open, fret 4, open, fret 7, you know, and you can kind of really be quite sort of dramatic with the slowness in which you play it compared to the rest of it, because the song's not sort of kicked in at this point. There's a bit where, on, um, I think it's played with a capo on the, on the original, so uh, he's kind of hammering on from open strings, uh, so pl playing slightly differently to what we're doing, but it works okay. So, in this version that is. So we are starting on fret 2 on the middle string and what we're going to try and do is a double hammer on. So that involves keeping this fretted, tapping down quickly with your third finger to fret 4 and then tapping down quickly with your little finger to fret 5. Not using this one. I'm going to slide up to fret 7. So I've actually <clears throat> got four notes there with one pick. So you might find that a little bit tricky. Again, watch your hand position. If you're too tense, you, your fingers aren't going to work very well. So you might find almost having that that sort of bar bar position might, might work again. And uh, when you slide up as well, don't necessarily leave your finger, your thumb, sorry, uh, you, you might want to let your thumb kind of follow follow your whole hand up as opposed to staying down there because you end up with an awkward position. So, and then drop back down, so same hand position, thumb position as before, and so there, there's some basic um, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, there is a technique lesson looking at these so you can check that out if you want. I think it might be in the same tuning as this as well actually. So 
I'm not going to explain how you play hammer-ons and pull-offs, but you can check that video out if you need a bit more. Basically, I've got three fingers fretted at the same time there, so it's pull-off from five to four, four to two, and tap back on again. You get a very smooth sound when you get used to using them. And then the drums kick in on the original. We've not got some drums, so I'm just going to drone twice. The guitar kicks in this second time round. Now that was four bars in total because it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. to the main uh, verse from that point okay so just one more time through that intro so I'll start uh, doing a little drone upstroke open top string open top string again and then Start with the with this part. Start with the main tempo. Swap fingers. Okay, so that's it. I uh, hope that was useful. Hope it's fun to play. I think it works really well on three strings. I think it's a great tune. Um, and alongside downloading the free song chart, if you're interested, you can also download a PDF for scale and chord box, sort of like reference sheets. So including the harmonic minor scale for this one and um, also the, the chords that are used in the chorus. Um, so just a useful reference sheet, help support the channel. Everyone's a winner, so uh, much appreciated if you're interested in that. But basically, I reckon that'll do for this video, so we'll be back here very soon with another three-string cigar box guitar lesson.